Why do Muslims believe that you can understand morality? Ali Reza, that is an amazingly important question in Islam and indeed in the larger society. Why do Muslims believe you can understand morality? Okay, so um, morality is seen as a core concept within religion. One of the purposes of religion to teach humankind um, how to live, how, how to better live. For many Muslims, the um, source of morality is exclusively revelation and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. But for some, um, across different Muslim schools, Sunni, Shia, and theological schools, the Asharites, the Mu'tazilites, um, there have been those who argue that God has also given humans the capacity to understand morality without revelation, what we refer to as moral rationalism. So what are the sorts of arguments that those theologians would use to advocate a moral rationalism? First is a claim. They claim that um, basic moral judgments are universal. People who deny religion all agree that justice is good. People who reject the coming of prophets would say that um, oppression is bad. Hmm. So they say self-evidently certain moral truths are accepted by all irrespective of religion. So if they accept these moral truths, they don't accept religion, it means they must have come to them, okay, independently. Mm. So that's one argument which you could say is a claim rather than an argument. Mm. Um, a second argument which goes beyond this claim that moral knowledge is, um, or basic moral knowledge is self-evident, is a little bit more technical. And that argument is formulated in various ways and I'll just try and recount one of them is the question of how do we know, and it's polemical, it's framed against those who believe that morality can only be known exclusively through revelation and divine command. So the argument goes as follows. It says, how do we know that we can trust God when he gives us moral knowledge in the Quran or in the Bible or any other religious scripture? How do we know that God isn't lying? Now, this is an interesting question, okay, and often, um, you know, shocks people to, uh, to even ask them for a religious person. How can you even consider that God would lie? But at the end of the day, we need to wonder, you know, what is it that means God can't lie? Is this another text which tells mm -hmm. us God does not lie? If that's the case, how can we trust that text? And ultimately, the moral rationalists would argue, we need to have some non-textual reasons for believing that it is unbefitting for God to lie and that lying is something which is morally, rationally, when all things are equal, an unbefitting thing to do. Hmm. What's happening there is that the, the jurist comes to a position that it is self-contradictory for God to lie so you actually rely on your most basic logical instincts of the law of contradiction, that a thing cannot both be and not be. Yeah, in a sense, I think what they're, um, what they're trying to argue is that um, humans don't ascribe lying to God hmm. because they view God as a perfect being. Hmm. Or Muslims or theologians, they yeah. wouldn't ascribe lying to God because they ascribe God as a perfect being. And lying is something which humans consider to be unbefitting. Imperfect immoral and therefore god must always be true and therefore god must always be true but we can only make this qualification if we accept mm. that humans have the ability to understand that lying is something bad irrespective of god's command ali Reza, that is an incredibly clear uh, presentation of not only something that is very urgent for islamic theology but actually something which I suspect any Christian theologians listening to this debate will, it will have little bells going off in their heads saying, ah, 
we've come across this before yeah. in our own tradition. And of, I mean, of course, there's, 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 there's criticisms to this position and qualifications mm -hmm. for this to position, but hopefully it's an entry point into a discussion. Ali Racer, thank you very much.